Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our channel if you have never been here before. And let's welcome Jennifer Doran. She is, we're going to have her information in the uh, box, but we're also going to put her information on the screen momentarily. Hi, Jennifer. Wonderful. Hello. Meeting. How are you? I just, I just saw, I don't know, it was out of the corner of my eye, something like an orb looking thing fly up. It could have been a light right to your open door area. Really? I well, don't know what we'll it was. Later. So somebody, somebody go back and look. Yeah, I'm going um, but to. But hi. Everybody see if you uh, comment about that if you see it. I, it, it, it I mean, it could have been a light reflection because I saw it only out of the corner of my eye. But I don't think so. But we'll see. But I know I've learned that Apple gestures can do stuff, but I, I have not used it my hands in this video so far. I don't know. You could put like a heart. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. What? You could do this. Well, do it if I rain. do it. Well, mine. Well, I don't know. Is it Apple? Oh. Make it rain? Or you I do have an up Apple. Like this? You have to do it for a while, I think. What? You know, if you do it like this. Yeah. Fire, yeah, I got the thumbs fireworks. up on my end. Oh, cool. Oh. Let's do fireworks. I got a little thumbs up in a bubble. <gasps> That's cool. You can do a thumbs down. <gasps> but there's way to do fireworks. I don't know. I know you can do this for balloons. Isn't that weird? That's a yeah. lot of balloons. Come on, <laughs> fireworks, man. I'm fireworks. fascinated. I'll have to work. I'll have to huh. work. All right, well. All right, well. Let's get back to our right. Right. This is going to talk hello. with my son, Eric. Hi, Eric. I love you. Hello. I love you, too. Those balloons are for you. I could do that all day. I uh, we could do that all day. That was fun. I know. So, Eric, we're going to talk about control and aggression. Let's first talk about your papa. And, oh, oppression. That's on him. Papa has, he loves to control in a way that's protective. So there are people that are benevolent controllers, like I don't want my kid to go out in the rain or, you know, that kind of stuff. And they get a little anxiety uh, because of it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there, are, there are good controls. Well, not good, but whatever. There's no good or bad. There are good types of controls or benevolent, uh, good intentions, but there are also nefarious forms of control. Yes. I think that would probably be the one that is uh, related to oppression. But go ahead, just tell me what you know, Eric. So, yeah, so what, what, what you were talking about, he's saying, like, um, the, like, control becomes dysfunctional when it is disruptive to your life and your relationship. If it, you know, even, even if it is coming from a well place intended. of, yes. Yeah. Yes, it, it still, it still becomes, um, I don't know, a challenge, so to speak, if, if it's affecting other people and affecting your life. Um, control to the, I mean, it, it, it scans the spectrum, he says, all the way from, you know, just controlling your own self and like things that you do to trying to control everything in your life, trying to control others. There's, there's, it's just, it's vast. It's well, vast. Just, before we talk about the, the more nefarious type, let's talk about how, one can handle a person like that or how a, a person with that can seek some relief. Well, so this I'll is you, definitely I'll tell control. you a story. Uh, oh, yeah, that, go ahead. I'm sorry. As far as my oh. husband's concerned, it's a long time ago and how we handle it. Um, he had glasses so he could see his food because he's super um, presbyopic. And uh, everyone was talking around the table. It was just too much for him. He just does not like a lot of chaos and noise, especially auditory noise. So you shouldn't have had five kids, dude. Uh -huh. But anyway, so he just pounded on the table and said, what is the meaning of this? And his eyes looked huge because they were magnified. It looked like Bambi. So everybody just started laughing. So we kind of just laugh, laugh it off. So that's one thing. You just don't take it seriously, right? You just know that is the person. That's their quirk, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Anyway, go ahead. You remember that. Probably. Well, yes. And, and that Eric says that is an example of acceptance, you know, on, on all your ends. It's like, this is who he is. We're just going to accept it. We're not going to let it run our lives. And that's, that's a, that's a great way for some people to do it. But, um, he, he, what Eric was saying was that for the people who do are here that have control issues, so to speak, it's usually something that their soul is trying to work on this. Time. Oh. So it's 
it's definitely showing up, can interfere in their life, can interfere in their relationships, and is probably something that they should be paying attention to. Uh, see if they can, you know, manage it in a more effective way, so to speak. Okay. Excellent. And? Um, and, you know, like, a lot of times control comes from childhood. You know, a lot of times when kids are raised in a really unpredictable household, uh, an al- alcoholic or an addicted household, it can create the need to control things because when things are so out of control when you're young, you you want to know what to expect because you don't like that, um, the unknown. So there's, and you know, there's all kinds of reasons. ADHD, mm-hmm. then you want to, your, your whole inner life is so chaotic that you mm-hmm. want to achieve some order on the outside. Yes. And that, and really on some level, there isn't anything wrong with that. Again, as long as it's not, you know, I, like I, this is a side no, I personally struggle with OCD. Mm-hmm. Most of my life, it's not a problem. There have been a couple times where it has affected my ability to function the way oh, I need yeah. to. Okay. Um, so that, you know, that's when you got to say, okay, wait a second. This is not working. I need help. Right. Okay. So what do you do so, about that? Well, if your if you, control uh, messes up your life. You've got to get to the root of why, why you're doing it. He said, you have to figure out what the reason is. Um, and if you can't figure out what the reason is, cause you know, sometimes we don't know if it's a lesson that's come, come from a past life. Yeah. We might not understand why we're doing it. And so we can't trace it back to something in this life. Yeah. So, you know, you could try to do a past life regression, yeah. um, to see if you can get to the root of it or you just, try to move forward with different a different set of skills so you might have to you know learn a different set of skills like okay instead of control what can I do can I do you know some deep breathing some internal talk what you know whatever it is to make it more functional for yourself all right now uh, you want to talk about the control that has ill has ill intent intentions yeah yeah, that? so that it's like a form it, of abuse, right? Yeah, it is. And and Eric was saying a lot of times like that sort of control, um, one of the places it tracks back to is greed. That you know, depending on you you know what you're doing. Like if you're if, if you're like more out in the public or, you know, uh, greed for money or or you know like that sort of thing that that can lead to control control behavior um sometimes it's really narcissistic oh yeah you know it tracks back to narcissism yeah. um so that those are the two he's giving me I, i'm sure that there's more Jealousy. that lead to like that uh, if you're oh, jealous yes. the money you want to control them so that you somehow yes. get feel better than that better yeah and so those are those are what lead to the oppression and and then it just can lead on a big on a huge scale yeah it can be just like internal personal relationships but it you know can be seen in politics and oh god um, yes you know and and these Uh, people probably seek careers where they well yeah yes yeah Yep, absolutely. Um, and, and like, um, you know, unfortunately, it, it happens a lot in families, like that, that control, like, you, you know, we, the, the parents pass away and then there's an estate and then, you know, one or some of the siblings pull forward and try to like, you know, that, that, so that's control, greed. that, yeah, that's greed. Yes, absolutely. Yep, uh, it's, it's a shame how many families oh, have those happened issues. To me. My sister, you know, can, uh, browbeat my dad into giving everything to her. So mm-hmm. that's terrible. Yep. Now she has no family that wants yeah. to speak to her. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I wrote her. She I was so happy birthday, happy anniversary. And finally I said, look, I it, it makes yeah. my stomach going nuts when, when every time you – connect with me so you know it, it yeah. just reminds me of the betrayal so i'll always be there for you but no more contact so yeah that's yeah. what no, control it really does it. it can ruin your life 
things like it that. It really can. And, and so as you're talking, Eric's saying, because I am dealing with some issues in my extended family and, you know, control, like when, when somebody has this so much like need to control, they, they oftentimes create this like fantasy war of what the world really is. And, really? and it, you know, then they can justify like your sister was able to justify oh, yeah. doing what she did, but it's because she created this world that, you know, it's like delusional. Yeah. Um, and that, he said that is on the, like the, on the other end down here, not like the oppression, the, you know, the, the politics, the rulers, that sort of thing. If you're so much about control, you will start to, or you can start to see the world differently yeah. and make things fit what you're, you're trying tending. to control. Yeah. Yes. And so then yeah. you can justify being mean to people, being, you know, um, greedy, being yeah. all these things. And it, it, it seems sensible to you. Yeah. Well, she's always struggled for money and we gave her a lot over her mm -hmm. life, her jobs and all that stuff. So I don't know how she does it, especially I was the only one well, to share my parents all their lives. Yes. Yeah, so by and saying, well, they, you know, they state. have, they have money themselves. You know, they, yes. Yeah, she, oh, she was absolutely able to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and well, be the yeah, right well, thing. At least yeah. the doctor, she's got money, that sort of thing. Anyway, that's just a personal aside. So what about, why do people become like that? Like Putin, for example, like a, tr a major oppressor and the dictators like him. How do they become that way? Is it something from childhood? I don't so know. Eric's saying, you know, a lot of times stuff like that, there is some contract stuff. It's just, oh. you know, part part of the collective. So somebody, ha you know, has to come in and, and be willing to be so controlling. But any time, for the most part, that we write something into our contract, there have to be things down here that push us in that direction. Yeah. Okay? So, you yes, like this, you come into a life where maybe you do come into a a childhood where there's abuse in the home or addiction in the home, yeah. you know, major instability in the home. Um, that's, you know, that is very common, he said. And then in this regard, like leaders and rulers and stuff, they, there's something in them. He said that they crave the adulation. Is that the right word? Yeah. 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 Perfect. Word. Um, and and so that like feeds them. It it, it feeds that um, ego. Yeah, That's the ego freedom. and the yeah. and the control and the power and um, so they just keep going like it's like on a high. But it's a lot of time. Like Putin, there's a lot of stuff in his contract that was just going to happen anyways. Right. Well, Hitler. I mean, he was a yeah. Contract. That was a contract. Mm -hmm. Somebody should have put a contract out on him. do you? Yeah. So what's the link? Talk about the link between control and anxiety. So, yeah, well, that's definitely as somebody who's struggled with anxiety my entire life. Yeah. You know, if you if you feel like you can control things and you're not surprised by anything, you know what's coming and it sets your mind at ease. I mean, it's it's oh, a yeah. fantasy. It's not real. But, yeah, but you works. know, so that, but yeah, you, that you, desire. You have, a, you have a healthy relationship with your anxiety, though, don't you? I do, but it took me a long time to get here. Yes, yeah. I'm proud of you. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So that's the connection there really with control and anxiety is a person with anxiety wants to be able to, okay, look ahead and see every, everything's in its place and this is what's coming. And, and so we try to create that a lot of times. <laughs> now, what's the connection or is there a difference between control and oppression? Maybe there isn't. Yeah, it's there the is. For, there for, for the there is because control. you can be controlling. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you can have controlling tendencies, but if you're not actually able to control anybody, then you're not oppressing anybody. Oh, yeah. It's so, control that actually works. Yes. It's limiting a person's freedom, basically. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. So that's, yeah, when the, when the control starts working... And being effective, that's when it links to oppression is what is what he says. Interesting. So uh, anything else about control? And what do you do if you're in a if you have somebody in your life that is controlling to the point where it's not fun anymore? You can't laugh at so, all. So I mean, 
Eric really is saying, that's when you you try to find a way to leave the relationship if you if you can. You, you know, like you you kind of put a stop to the relationship with your sister. Like, okay, I, this is done. Yeah. Um. If if this person, you know, it just depends. Is the person willing? To acknowledge their control issues and work on it, and you love the person, then you stay. If they're not, absolutely. Yeah. And you're afraid, then and you're afraid of them, then you reach out for help and and say, I need help getting out of this. And you know, if it's just somebody that you could walk away from and you're ready, you just go. Yeah. Um, that, that's I guess that is the definition of a toxic relationship. Yeah. Right? Is the one yes. that is controlling and oppressing you, and, and yes. taking away your feelings. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Your freedoms taking away your power yes. yeah it, he's also he just linked um because he's it, he's talking about like we're talking about like kind of romantic relationships and then friendship relationships because yeah. you know like the parent child relationship can be different because yeah like when you're raising kids you do kind of have to it's not really control but you got to teach them right. so you, you are telling them what to do and, and you're guiding them and then a lot of times people have a hard time switching out of that parent role. That's exactly what happened to my husband. He didn't graduate to that. Okay. I can't tell them what to do anymore. Yeah. It shifts into control when, when, when you are like that. And And he admitted that he he missed that, that it was hard for him. Then he's fine. But yeah. yeah. But Eric was also putting, especially to like friendships and romantic relationships, not that's the only place, but possessiveness and control. Those two. Yeah, let's talk about that, Eric. Yeah. Um, so possessiveness really does kind of go in tandem with jealousy. They're not exactly the same, but yeah, they're very, very that. similar. Yeah. Um, is is what is what I'm getting from him, which I never really thought of it like that. There there is mm. some differences, but they're very similar. Um, and so a lot of times in a relationship as like a friendship or a romantic relationship, control is gonna come from jealousy, possessiveness, um, and that's that is yes, that's when it becomes toxic. Ugh, like um, you're mine, nobody can have you, that kind of thing. Uh-huh. So they won't let you go yes. out with your friends and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, that's not. Good. Yeah, yeah, and even friendships can get even friendships can be I like know. that. You know? Oh my gosh, um, my, my um, second eldest had a real problem in middle school with somebody that's like she said, Michelle, will you be my best friend? I said, no, I, I want to have lots of friends. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, you're my friend. Oh boy. She turned she became one of the mean girls and just yes. bullied. And bullied. that Oof. those kind of um he Eric seen those kind of things on the extreme, this is when you start seeing stalkers. It, mm. it's like those are kind of like the sprinklings of what on a major scale becomes a stalker. Yeah. You know, um I forgot what I was gonna say. It was right there. I want to look at fireworks uh, hand gestures and oh, yeah. try it out, but um it was about Michelle, I think. <clears throat> oh yeah, no, I know. How can we remember that we have absolute sovereignty over our own energy and that no one and nothing can 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 uh, access our energy without our absolute permission? Without How can we remember permission. that? We'll look it up. Well, reminding reminding ourselves of it now there is some stuff that's in the contract so a lot of times when we get ourselves into situations like this it's because we truly don't see it happening because we've been blinded by it because there's something for us to learn there Mm -hmm. uh and then it you know humans we are creatures of habit and so yeah it's very hard for most of us once we are doing something or in a relationship to to get out it's not just, you know, I mean, some people can just walk away and it's easy, but for a lot of people, it's not, it's not easy to end relationships. It's not, you know, it's really hard to end relationships with family members. Yeah. You know, if they're, if they're toxic and controlling, it's hard to say, I know your family, but I can't do this. So yeah, a lot of times, that's it. yeah, a lot of times that's what happened. Eric says like, people know that they're, you know, maybe in a toxic situation or a bad relationship, but it's scarier than trying to leave it or end it. Um, so it, you know, the yeah. devil, you know, I guess is better than yeah. The devil you don't for really, a lot of really. people. Yeah. 
So just to leave and don't give a forwarding address. I mean, it is it is tough yeah. when family is involved. And uh, well, that's, that's the other thing. The that fireworks, you, thing. fireworks is supposed to be two thumbs up. Okay, um, just don't, ignore me while I'm trying to work this thing. What happened with that? Eric was saying that when yeah. people want to end a relationship, they really all the time feel like, well, most there of it oh, you did it. Okay, good. Um, most of the time, if Thank you've God. made the decision to leave a relationship, okay, like you're, say you're with a controlling partner and you say, you know what, that's it, I'm going to leave. Then you, like, we are designed to give the other person, like, a rebuttal, okay? And so then we get all twisted up and it, it makes your head all clouded and you think, okay, well, maybe. If you want to end a relationship, you do not have to give the other person a chance to Your butt. Say, say why you shouldn't. Yeah. Yes. You can just go. And that happens to a lot of people when you try to end a relationship, the other person can you listen to what they're saying and then, you know, if you're not like really strong in your conviction, suck you back in. Yeah. Um so that he, he says that's one really good way to remember about keeping, you know, what you said about the sovereignty over your own energy no. is that you don't have to give a person a chance keep to your own power. Or something. Don't give your power yes, away. Yes, when you've made the decision. Yeah, you never need to give your power away, people. Never. Yeah. I think my MacBook is too old to do the things. Let me see. I think it's too old. Yeah. Mine's too old. It probably doesn't okay. have the cool stuff that yours does. Well, all right. Well, <laughs> thank you guys for letting us play. And we'll go back and see yeah. if that orb is there. But, uh, yeah, anything else you want to say before we close, Eric? Yeah, so, it, actually, because we he kind of addressed the people who maybe are, are being controlled. You are somebody that finds yourself to be a controlling and, and and it's affecting your relationships. Really get to the bottom of it because it, it can be a lot easier and there's a lot better ways to do things mm -hmm. um, than having to force your will onto others. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid, he said, to try and change. Yeah. You know, change is hard. It's it's not easy, but it can be done. Yeah. Um, it is. So. A, unless you're a narcissist. Narcissists have a tough time. I, I think the, mm, the <clears throat> cure rate for narcissism very difficult. First of all, they're so narcissistic yeah. they don't think they need help. The other people are the ones that are the problem and they're the ones that need therapy, you know, that yeah. kind of All right. Yeah, well, exactly. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Eric. Love you both. Remember to check her out in the description box and I hope that was the screen. If Give this a thumbs <laughs> up, please. <laughs> Dang it. It's not working. Yeah, thumbs up is hard because I couldn't. Oh, look like an idiot. It's I mean, I'm an Apple. Okay. I'm, I'm not to play with it. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Be sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next session we have with our lovely Jennifer. Bye-bye.